Hey there viewers, Eric O here, South Main Auto. Welcome back to another repair video. Well, or in this case, an attempted repair video. You can see I don't have a car in behind me because it still sits outside. Got a used car dealer that dropped off a 99 Grand Vitara. Real hot rod. <laughs> Evidently he has it sold and he took it into some shop uh, and uh, tried to get it inspected, but it won't pass because the monitors aren't set tells me that they've been working on it, uh, you know, trying to get it to pass and have been, you know, driving it around and changing parts, but uh, haven't made any leeway with it. So he dropped it off here. I've never done work for the guy, but uh, we'll see if we can look at it and figure out what's going on with this thing. So grab our scan tool and we'll go out in the parking lot and see what we got. We got a computer plugged in here, so I'll try to keep my hand out of the way. We'll go in here and just kind of verify some things. Check and uh, see if it has any codes, first and foremost. No current codes, no history codes. So now we'll go look at the readiness monitors and see uh, what's not set. He didn't really have a whole lot of information for me, other than the fact it won't pass. We've got this little hot rod sold on sale. <laughs> Looks like they've uh, probably put some spark plugs in. I see some spark plugs here in the console. Receipt for some gas, but that's the only evidence of parts I see kicking around in here. Okay, let's see. Monitors, since diagnostic will go clear, we'll see what that is. Well, O2 sensor is not complete. And just catalyst and evap so it is running a drive cycle because EGR and O2 heater so it's not like it's not running anything it's just not running everything how's that sound so O2 evap catalyst well let's go back here and we'll poke in some data there's quite a few things that'll inhibit a drive cycle We'll look at all these various inputs to see. I mean, I've seen everything from faulty neutral switches to brake switches, uh, thermostat. Thermostat's a big one, just the engines don't warm up all the way. Those have been sitting outside for a little I dropped off a little while ago, so that's still 80 degrees. 67 on the air. Throttle position sensor seems to work. Typical used car, just about out of gas. <laughs> Let's see here. A little, yeah, close throttle switch works. That one right there, that's always a that's one that can hinder it if it never, you know, receives signal coming off from an idle. So I'll go over here, see if anything. And paramedic pressure looks good. Let's make sure that transmission range switch works. So that's this one right here. It's just, yeah, that's reverse. Yeah, so that's not stuck permanently in park. Uh, well, nothing looks abnormal just sitting here static. So we'll pull up some data and fire this thing up, see if it warms up, and look at some other things here. I think I built this a big enough list. So we got intake air, coolant temp, RPM, look at the mass airflow, the map, throttle position, barrow. Uh, being a V6, we got you know bank one and bank two. So we're gonna look at our loop status here, make sure it's going in the closed loop. Kind of check in on our uh, oxygen sensors, but just uh, I didn't catch this the first time, but just looking at this right now, so we have our our bias voltage. Oh wait a minute. So that's. I wonder if it doesn't have a, a bias voltage on the upstream O2 sensors because both these are sensor one. I see sensor two is sitting there with a 
Minus voltage, huh? Well, let's fire it up here and see. Ooh, she sounds nice. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a motion sensor. I wonder if the heaters are working in them. I think one of the, I think the heater monitor was one that was set though. Immediately went in the closed loop. Field trims a open loop due to driving. I don't know why it says that. When it goes into open loop, it shuts our fuel trim right off there. live diagnostics you're gonna hear a lot of me just hemming and hawing trying to talk out my yeah, talk out my feelings <laughs> sound like I'm talking to my wife tell me your feelings <laughs> uh, trying to talk out my thoughts here instead of just uh, staring at a blank screen uh, so I see that it's that it is warming up or you know starting to what's curious is the gauge right now let me uh, show you that so that's the coolant gauge that's about halfway already but when we come down here, it's only at, uh, you know, 118. So this I don't understand. I wonder if uh, in our custom here, if we got a vehicle speed, I don't know why I would think we're driving. Let's see, vehicle speed. And yeah, vehicle speed. Just see if uh, uh, vehicle speed zero in park zero park okay. So that I don't understand. That doesn't make sense. Of course, you know we're not going to get an accurate fuel trim reading. But um, what's peculiar is the O2 sensor monitor was one that wasn't set, and I'm just seeing them. I'm watching them switch here, but I see this one bank two. It's switching, you know, from about 0.1 up to 700 or so. So that's bank two. Yeah, so yeah, from about one to 800, so that's that's normal. But I see our other action sensor here, bank one sensor one, appears to kind of be just kind of hovering around, what, 380, 480? open that up so yeah look at that if you're just looking at the graph this looks like uh, looks like it's working perfect but it's not even changing barely over what 130 millivolt or 120 millivolts oh now it's in closed loop so it did it did switch to closed loop Well, that action sensor is only popping back and forth 100 millivolts. I would have thought it would have just dropped lean right there. I tell you what, let's uh, let's kind of focus on that a little bit. Let's get rid of all this stuff. Let's just look at these upstream action sensors and the downstreams. And to see what uh, that's bank one. Oh, that's sensor two. Sorry. We want to look at these little guys here. Okay, so this is bank two. Make sure I open them all up. What the heck? Oh, you guys got a heck of a glare there. Sorry, I'm trying to scooch over here. I don't know if we're onto something or not, but we give her some throttle here. Use car. We don't want to blow this baby up. He's got her sold. I'm just gonna hold it at a steady throttle. So here's bank one, sensor one, and this thing is switching like mad, but it's uh, it's 
only going up to 520 millivolts and dropping down as low as, as 380. You can see the one after the converter. This thing's just cooking. It's hanging right around uh, 900 millivolts. So, I mean, it looks like our converter is working, but I think it's pulling overtime. See how it responds. Well, our rear O2 sensor responded to the quick clean condition. Bank 2 responded. Bank 1, still switching like a madman. Hmm, no kidding. Yeah, you can see, uh, I say before we get uh, too amped up, we go look at this uh, oxygen sensor here, bank one, sensor one, because that obviously has some serious issues. Well, just for grins and giggles, let's uh, take it for a shake down the road, I guess, and just see what it does. We got it. It's got a it's got a plate in the windshield, and I guess we're legal. Let me move this so I can uh, put this thing in gear. I changed my mind on the test drive. I had the camera all propped up and it's going to pull out on the road, and I don't really think I want to drive it down the road. <laughs> I mean, other than the fact we're gonna have to try to run a drive cycle through it, it started like shaking and it smells like it's about ready to catch on fire and I could smell gas so it's your typical used car salesman special one owner low mileage clean interior <laughs> lots of new parts isn't that what they usually put in their hands so I think uh, we'll just bring it in and look at that I mean I, it's not going to run a drive cycle with an O2 sensor that's not functioning and you know maybe that's what's kicking it into open loop but it's it's clearly not working so uh, let's look at that. I don't know why it's not throwing a code for it, but uh, that's besides the point. So let's see if it's just a faulty O2 sensor or maybe some wiring issues. Who knows what's going on there? I thought the O2 sensors were accessible from underneath, but got the rear rear one there. So that's bank one, sensor two there. And I'm thinking somebody's already been on that one. This thing's puking oil all over the place. It leaks so much oil, it's almost dark under here. And then, uh, so right there is, that's bank two, sensor two, and I'm no rocket surgeon, but I'm pretty sure somebody's been on that one too. But they're not the ones that concern us. I see it's got silicone all over the exhaust pipe here. Looks like somebody's probably put a uh, universal uh, converter on there of some sort and a little clamp o flange and but anyhow the converter the action sensors we want to get to they're way uh i don't know if we can see this or not let me see if we can get this up in there way up there at the top of the converter you can just see it sticking out so right there it is it looks like a probably an original one but must be we got to get them from under the hood that'll be nice we got her all warmed up now i can see a few burns coming out of this thing be able to see this or not. Let's see. It is. Oh my gosh, can we see it? There it is. So it's way right there. Well, it's probably not going to focus, but so there it is. It's uh, kind of points in towards the transmission bell housing and connector heads in that direction. So I think what we'll do in this scenario is being as a used car salesman and they really don't like to spend any money to fix anything. I'll see if he wants to just buy an oxygen sensor and put one in it, see if it cures the problem, or see if he wants to pay me to take the time to, you know, to do the testing, you know, to check the, you know, the O2 heater there and to, you know, diagnose the O2 sensor and pull it out and bench test it and, you know, run a couple other tests. Or, uh, you know, maybe in a case like this where I'm pretty certain it's just going to be a bad oxygen sensor, maybe he just wants to put one in it. So I'm going to make a phone call, see what he wants to do, and then we'll go from there. Well, I spoke with a guy who owns it, and uh, he wants to just put an O2 sensor in it. Uh, however, <laughs> the dilemma is we have to use a universal O2 sensor because it is half the cost of a direct fit O2 sensor. I've never used one of those. Um, so uh, Advanced Auto is uh, bringing it up to me, and uh, we're going to see if a universal O2 sensor works. 
and we're gonna find out what a universal O2 sensor is. <laughs> so stick around, this could be good. So what the heck is a universal O2 sensor? One size fits all, he says. All makes, all models. Hopefully we just get this one out. Cracked it loose. See if we can get the connector off. That's in a heck of a spot. All makes, all models, just like antifreeze. Fits everything. I tell you, if you uh, if you're working on one of these, and you're trying to get this oxygen sensor connector off. It bolts to a metal bracket back there. I've been probably 20 minutes trying to get this connector undone. I got the connector unhooked, the electrical part, that's fine. I can't, it bolts, the, uh, the action sensor, you know, it's one of the little metal mail tabs that stick down, the action sensor clips onto it. Well, you can't get to it, but uh, I had to unbolt the whole metal bracket on there to tip it upside down to, you know, to press the little tab. To get it undone, probably could have just snapped it off, but what a pain. Okay, good. There, just got that unplugged real quick. Let's see if we can get it unscrewed here. Ouch, she's still a little toasty back there. Cracked it loose and hopefully we can get it out the rest of the way. Huh. Feels like it feels like it's pretty loose. Not very much wire on it. Probably only got about a five inch pigtail. You know what I did. Oh, you big dummy. I unplugged the wrong one. I gotta take that metal bracket back off there. <laughs> oh, I unplugged the downstream one. I'm turning, I'm like, why isn't the wire turning? Well, it's because you can't see nothing. And I undid the wrong one. Oh, you big dummy. Well, the reason I undid the downstream one is, uh, remember how them wires were twisted up? I wanted to get those untwisted, so that's the main main reason I unhooked that one. So now I'm going to unhook the one I'm working on, and we'll be uh, we'll be good to go here. Okay, I think now I have the correct action sensor unplugged. Now you can only see about half what you need to see here. Hey, at least we're going to leave things better than we found them, right? I'm going to untwist the wires on that downstream one. You only got about enough room to get one hand back there, so trying to use a pick and unhook the connector is a little tough. There. There. Woo, finally. So there she is. All kinds of crusties on it. Okay. It does look like an original one. It's an NTK, so. Here it is. Advance Auto showed up with it. Made in the USA. This probably isn't going to end well. The last American made product we had uh, did not work very good. Let's see. Smart Link, it says. Oh boy. Let's see what this thing, oh man, that's gonna be awesome. Got instructions and all kinds of stuff. What in the 
thunder is there? Oh, I see. This is, uh, I'll grab my knife here. Oh, boy. So I think these are screwed together like wire connectors, aren't they? Yep, look at that. You know what I think about that. We're not going to have enough room back for this big old honky tonk in there. I mean, for crying out loud, we only need to. Oh, you know what? So this oxygen sensor comes with a big old honking wire lead on there and then just our wires. So I just say we go do a little chip chop chip. We'll cut this thing right off. Oh, this, uh, we might have to look on a wiring. Well, no, we don't have to look on a wiring diagram, do we? Our two white ones. Okay, I was going to say down the action sensor, they're not side by side, but up here they are. Yeah, let's uh, <clears throat> let's just cut this off and we'll do a little splicey splicey and leave us a little extra room and we'll be in good shape for the shape we're in. Oh, well, maybe it'd be cheaper to buy the OEM one by the time we get uh, <laughs> all the labor here. I don't know, sometimes it's not best to be cheap and save money. A lot of times it ends up costing you money. I'm pretty sure if this doesn't work, they're not going to take it back. <laughs> I'm just going to use these uh, crimp and seal butt connectors here. They'll work fine for this job. Now maybe their little connector there that it comes with, maybe that Maybe that works just fine. I mean, I see the concept, so it looks like you put the butt connector together that it comes with, and then it looks like every, all the stuff fits inside this little box here, and then it's got little rubbers that your wires stick through, but this is a big old honking unit here to, at least in this application, maybe other applications, you know, if it's just hanging out midair, that might work just fine. You know, I guess it'd be better than just twisting them together with black tape, you know, I mean, if you're you know, DIY and that's all and that's all you got. Why not? I've got a little extra. That'll give us plenty of wire. Handle's falling off. Some white ones. You guys really need to see all of this, but I don't really have anything to talk about. Been so stinking busy. It's been like it's been ridiculous. I mean, I'm not complaining because I got work, but man, it has just been absolute chaos here. It's actually after five right now. That's why it's really quiet. This is kind of a last-minute project. Had to get all my other work done first, and then. So I might look at this thing for him. So here we are. Got a lot of stuff going on out there. I actually got a Volkswagen out there. Unbelievable. I can't believe I actually said yes. I have a hard time saying no. I always tell everybody I never work on Volkswagens, but I've got one out there. It's just a wheel bearing and some park and brake cables. The guy says he brought his own parts, so. I put a wheel bearing in his Audi for him too, and he brought me all genuine Audi stuff, so that job went pretty well. Hopefully he did the same thing with his Volkswagen. I got this sneaking suspicion that I'm gonna get in there and find like Dorman cables or something. <laughs> that would suck. I wouldn't put them on. No way, Dorman, Dorman brake cables. Dorman's junk, their brake cables are even junkier. So, there we go, here's that. 
torch here and shrink these down and get that spun back in and get the twist off the downstream one. Being that it went through the painstaking efforts of unplugging it. I know some people commented that they don't like these. And, um, but I tell you, I mean, the, these things work great. I, I don't know. It's just my opinion. I solder and heat shrink. I, I, you know, I do, I do both. I've got some really good heat shrink we get right from the interstate battery guy. And it's got the, it's got the adhesive in it. So when you shrink it down, you know, all the sealer comes out. And so, so don't these, you know, you crimp these on, you shrink them down, sealer oozes out. I mean, they, they make a good crimp. I don't, I guess I don't have anything against them. And I guess with that being said, I have used these before where there is a um, solder and seal ones. Now I had a, I had an old Jeep Scrambler, an '81 Scrambler, and I did uh, quite a bit of quite a bit of wiring in that because I had a Chevy V8 in it and stuff, and had some extra you know accessories and things of that nature. And I used quite a bit of the solder and seal ones that uh, I picked up from Napa, and they were great. You put them, you put the wires in, you know, you slid it down twisted the wires, pulled it over. As soon as you heated it up with a little butane torch, it would melt the solder and it would it would uh, heat shrink it all at the same time. Well, it was all fine and dandy, except for about a year and a half later, about a year and a half, two years later, I just had random things just stop working. Like, you know, my reverse lights quit working and then this quit working. And every time I would check out the circuit and see what was going on, I always traced it back to one of those connectors. And to this day, I will not use one of those, you know, solder and heat shrink connectors because it was, I don't know what it was. They just seemed like they got hard and then they cracked and then the solder just broke apart. So it just, it just didn't work. But you can see, I mean, these, uh, these seal down good. I don't know if you can see the sealant that oozes out of the ends of them. I'll try to hold that still. But uh, yeah, it has a little sealant that oozes out. You get a good crimp on them. You know, they, they work good. You know, you just give them a little tug, make sure they uh, held together good. I don't see any reason not to use them. Um, you know, there's certain applications you can't, you know, if it's a broken wire, like in a door flex, I wouldn't use it because it's just too rigid. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't have anything against them. They are a little expensive, but I mean, we just did that in a matter of minutes instead of, you know, busting out the heat shrink and the, and the solder and I mean, not that that's you know, real difficult, but you know what I'm saying. Anyways, let's get this thing in and see if this works. Well. spots to put this thing. Alright. That started in there good. I gotta just gotta reach back and snug it up. I'll get that done. I'll get it snugged up. I'll get the uh, wires all clipped back up in where they belong and grab the scan tool, grab the camera, we'll fire it up. Let's set back up over here on the toolbox. So let's got the key on right now. So we'll go in here. Go ahead and fire it up. I think it sounds like a diesel. <laughs> oh, okay, where are we at here? Got our bank one sensor one. Actually, it's quieting it down now. It's getting a little oil pressure. So this is the one that was giving us fits before. We, uh, why don't we just go look at those 202 sensors? That one, this one. Okay, where are we at here? So this is bank one, sensor one. And you can see already our min max scale is. Can you guys see? Yep. So our min max scale is 750 and uh, 0.230. So that's already a bigger sweep. Uh, 0.190. It's a bigger sweep than uh, what it was doing. The P2 
gears here, just even just this brief uh, little bit of warm up. That it is working and our universal oxygen sensor works, so <laughs> I was skeptical. I mean, I mean, the theory's there, I guess it should work, but sometimes vehicles are pretty sensitive to, you know, OE, O2 sensors and aftermarket, so let me go give this thing some throttle. pretty responsive. That's a good thing. I guess uh, let's see what that remember the downstream O2 sensor on bank one there that was running uh, that was running super rich. Let's look at that see if that's kind of that, this upstream one working should uh, help that out a lot. Uh, so this is bank one sensor two. Yeah, that's looking a lot better. That was running like 900 millivolts if I remember right. That was really pegged out. Uh, probably because the fuel trim was, you know, with this O2 sensor being stuck the way it was before, it was really kind of pouring the old coal to it. But I guess the good news is if we do get it to drive, the catalyst monitor wasn't set, but it appears looking at this data here that the converters are working. I don't think we have anything to worry about there. Yeah, they look like they're actually working quite well. Well, I don't know if it'd be worth taking it for a test drive, being it's all warmed up, but I can take it for a shimmy down the road. Go back and look at some other data. I mean, at least we fixed one thing that we saw wrong. Um, I guess we can just take a quick poke through here. And so it looks like it's warming up all the way, so that's a good thing. Both in closed loop now. Fuel trims look okay. And our short term hanging around zero, that's good. Yeah, I don't know if it'll run an EVAT test anyways. The uh, dropped it off almost out of gas. You know, so we could test drive it. Not uncommon. Well, I don't see anything else that's really jumping right out to me. Um, eh, what the heck. We'll go take her for a shake. See if we survive. So I grabbed uh, my little Actron scanner. It's got a drive cycle monitor on it. So we can just watch this while we're driving down the road. It's a whole lot easier than fiddling with the uh, big scan tool there. And we can see we just got the catalyst EVAP and O2 sensor. I don't know, let's just take it for a shake. If uh, if it doesn't work, I'll grab some gas. We'll come back and try it in the morning. So I decided to pull over and just turn around and about I don't know, seven miles from the shop, but I'm near certain it's not going to run a drive cycle because it's already warmed up. So I just getting ready to turn around here and got something I want to show you. I think when your mailbox gets uh, to this condition, it may be time to, uh, you know, throw it away and buy a new one, get a different post, or half a dozen bungee cords. 
So I was on my way back to the shop here and I seen something way cooler than that mailbox. Uh, let me see if I can get this for you. So that's my dad's shop. I was just uh, I was coming by that and I look up in the, the, pond, the pond right next to their shop and I look up in the tree and I went by and I see this huge bird and it's a bald eagle. I don't know if you guys have seen any of those or not but they're starting to populate around here a little bit. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. So he sits here above this pond and he uh, likes to go carp fishing and kill uh, rabbits and fish and stuff like that. I've seen him down here before, usually in the morning, so I've, I can't say I've ever seen him down here in the evening. I assume it's a him. I don't know. It might be a her. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer without flying away. Get you a good footage. When these things take off and fly, they're humongous. in this but I think I think these birds are cool they're so huge I think he sees us and they are so cool little claws I see we see if we can get a little closer It's just like going to the zoo. Well, we're pretty much almost right underneath the little guy now. Man, look at that. Wouldn't want them grabbing on you. Well, I think that's gonna do it for me on this one, viewers. It did not run a drive cycle, but that is no surprise to me. The vehicle was already warmed up, but I figured, ah, hey, what the heck, we'll take it for a little drive, and I'm glad we did. We got to see uh, one way to fix your mailbox, for beginners, I guess, is uh, you got five or six bungee cords, old rusty mailbox, don't worry, because you can put it right back where it belongs. And then the cool part was we got to see that bald eagle. Now, we don't see too many of those around here, uh, you know, we mostly see the occasional, you know, robin and morning doves and blue jays and, you know, chickadees and nuthatches and, you know, birds like that. You know, we got red tail hawks and some ospreys, but when you see a, you know, a bald eagle, that's, that's pretty cool. And, and uh, I've been fortunate enough to watch that bird, you know, usually quite often in the mornings when I'm down, uh, I stop at my parents' shop down there and, and have coffee and toast and stuff and hanging out and you'll see him up there in the trees and, and he's usually hunting in the morning, so it's uh, pretty pretty neat to watch him pull out, you know, like a nice sized carp, and just drag it up on shore, and then he just rips it to shreds, you know. So that's uh, pretty pretty impressive to watch him. I mean, he'll he'll dive, he'll hit ducks, you know, whatever's whatever's easy. And uh, you know, I always tell my mom they got this little yappy dog, a little Chihuahua. Well, I don't know. I'd be kind of don't tell. I'd be kind of glad if the eagle gets that thing, but. I tell her, you shouldn't let that dog out. Like, oh, they wouldn't hurt my little Maddie, she says. I'm like, Ma, I don't think that eagle really cares that your little Maddie is your little pet. Looks like a snack. <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully for my mom's sake, it doesn't eat her dog. But I'm pretty sure that little chihuahua looks like a little rabbit running across the yard. So, someday, I just hope I got the video camera when it happens. No, not really. <laughs> That's wrong. I shouldn't say that. But uh, I don't even know where I left off. So I'll grab some gas. We'll come back. We'll try it. Uh, try it again in the morning. Let it cool down. Give it a proper warm-up cycle, and and I think that'll get it. Um, I didn't see anything right off the bat on the data stream that jumped out to me. Um, hopefully uh, you didn't either, because you got no way to tell me until I post this, and it's too late. So I'll grab some gas. We'll do a part two of this video to see if that fixed it. I suspect it will, so stick around and, and uh, keep your eyes peeled, 
see uh, see if we got it. So in the meantime, check us out on Facebook. You can find us on uh, there. Give us a give us a like there, and you can find me on Google Plus, and uh, you can follow us there. So thanks for watching, and as always, viewers, remember: if I can do it, you can do it.